Ew. Lewis and Gross for life. Is the stream coming in, Lewis? Do you see the stream? Oh my gosh, look at all those people in the chat. Hope you guys are ready for a mano y mano episode with just me and medium sized Lewis Walls. Boom! And we're live. Shout out to Zach Hicks. Sucks that I have a full day of work scheduled tomorrow. Let's see here. Yeah, I got mine. Oh, shoot. Got some pre orders going in. Some baby blue, some mom's minivan blue. That's good to hear. Airphone said real soon. I'm a man of my word. Here we are. Was that an hour ago? <laughs> Shout out to Mark T. All the regulars are here. Good to see everyone. We got quite a show for you guys in store. Quite a little show for you guys in store. Ulysses Martinez is here, and he says, Hey, yo. Did you guys hear that um, TC is going to be hunting down the leakers, man? If I were John Prosser, I'd be a little concerned about that. <laughs> I I do think that I, I do think that perhaps John Prosser's like the last thing that he sees might be Tim Cook standing over him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think TC might he might not finish him off, but it will definitely be two of the um the goons, the Apple goons. Happy pre iPhone day to y'all. Oh, shout out to Nick Paris, Nick Paddy. Adam Broussard's here. Guess what he wants me to say? Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want to hear nothing about it, Luce. Is it earlier than normal? No, it's actually a, a little bit later. <laughs> Is this early? I don't know. Guys, clearly we we need to f- come up with a schedule. Do you know how hard it is to go live every week? I, it's just like every single week something goes wrong. Uh, El Caney's not here, as you guys have noticed. I'll mention why when we start the show. It's just There's just always something. There's technical challenges. There's personnel challenges. Sometimes Lewis has to uh, hunt down one of the writers before they escape and make it outside the Cult of Matt compound and make it to law enforcement. I mean, there's just a lot of things that have to happen before we go live. But uh, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. I kind of, you know what I wanted to do, Lewis? I, I don't think we'll have time to do it, but I kind of wanted oh. to talk about more of the Apple TV Plus content. Like, have you been following what's going on with Apple TV Plus? Yeah. There yeah, kind of seems have. like there's some decent stuff on the horizon. Did you see well, that trailer with um with uh, Tom Hanks for no. <laughs> post apocalyptic castaway real cast, steel castaway two? This time there's robots. <laughs> Did you catch that trailer? Yeah, very. Yeah, I just um yeah I don't know about that one. We'll Red, see. Yeah, we'll see. I, Foundation it, tomorrow. Is it tomorrow? Yeah, dude. I I am I'm resisting. I really am resisting because I don't want to pay for another streaming service. But I might actually start paying for Apple TV Plus for five bucks. It's like, you know, I get C season two, which I have not yet seen yet. Red Zuon was a uh, stand up for LK. They might peace out. Well, <laughs> look, ah. I don't blame you. All right. Well, we got enough people here, Lewis. Let's go ahead and queue up Mrs. You know who. Let's see if she here. Mrs. D, where are you? <laughs> Mrs. D, you are looking lovely today. What's that on your face? Oh, it's my special face mask. You know that, silly goat. Yeah, it looks nice. I can see like the skin around your eyes looking fresh, wrinkle-free. We need to get some of that for LK, don't we? <laughs> Jeez, that's it. Kick, kick him when he's down. <laughs> Freshen him up a little bit. <laughs> you should sell some of that, Mrs. D. We should get a bottle of that for LK. Freshen up that cold cloth would take that right off. Well, yeah, with the exfoliation power of the cold cloth and that cream, (laughs) El Caney's going to be looking six to seven hours younger, possibly months. He's going to look like a nice, fresh 70 year old after this is done. God, I'm sorry, this is mean. I love El Caney. You guys know that. All right, let's let's get this thing going. Let me make sure I have the, uh, the right notes up here. And we'll get this show going because we got a lot of stuff to talk about. I don't even know if we're going to have time for all of this stuff. So let's get the music cued, Lewis. Here we go. Hello and welcome to Hookass, the best 30 plus minute album conversation you're going to hear all week long. I'm your host, Airfront Elijah. Joining me today, he spent the last week whipping the Cult of Mac Riders into shape. And I do mean whipping. He's got a collection of whips in a glass case. Sometimes he uses the short one, the horse crop. Sometimes he goes for the long one if he needs to hit a writer at the end of the cage. Got to keep those stories cranking out. He's a managing editor of Cult of Mac. Ooh, Lewis Wallace is here. 
Oh, uh, yeah, just, uh, yeah, I, no comment. Do you ever dress Not up like, um, the, Indiana Jones? In the headline. What? 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 Uh, do you ever dress up like Indiana Jones? When Not again. Them? What happened? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, good. You, uh, stop that. You there, Lewis? Yeah, you. Okay, good. You had me worried for a second because you were talking how to churn and saying all sorts of stuff that I couldn't understand. <laughs> I was like, oh, no. Did you Not lose again. me right as we're going live? But but no, here you are. So, so uh, LK can't, can't be here. He's sick. Um, apparently, he got sick last minute. And um, he was like, I got a bad case of something. And he's Loving like, you. I've got urgent number ones. I've got urgent number twos. I've got a few urgent number threes. So he's running around doing something. He can't broadcast. So we wish him well. He uh it's not it's not it's not what you think it is. It's it's nothing serious, it doesn't seem like. It just seems like he needed a little sick day. So hopefully he'll be back next week. But I'll be honest, he was looking pretty grim. He was looking pretty <laughs> grim. So keep him in your thoughts and prayers because this could be it for Al Kenny. I hope it's oh not, but God. uh <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to tell him that because I didn't want him to be worried. But when I saw him, I was like, "Ugh!" It's just so supportive. I thought it was. I thought he was trying to troll me. I thought he had put up an image of the Crypt Keeper, <laughs> but it was him. And I was like, "Oh my gosh, dude! You need to go to sleep asap." So we got a lot of stuff to talk about. iPhone 13, iPhone 13 Pro, the good, the bad, the ugly, and I regret to say there is some of the ugly. I don't know if you guys saw my tweet this week that um, got a, free, a few retweets. I wasn't trying to. I wasn't trying to go viral, but that's what happens when you have really good tweets, Lewis. You know that. And John Prosser, <laughs> John Prosser retweeted me, and that's when um, it caught fire. And I was like, oh man, I finally made it. I can make a career out of tweeting now. What so, amazing tweet was this? Uh, it was the one about cinema mode. Ah. I found something out about cinema mode. Should I bring it up on screen? I don't think I need to do that. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the early reviews for iPhone 13, iPhone 13 Pro. Most of it's really good. I know we both have our pre-orders in. We can talk about that. We'll talk about the iPad mini. Uh, and then we can wrap up with some discussion on a new feature that is coming soon to HomePod. HomePod! Can you believe it? God, it's oh, amazing. What? HomePod. <laughs> I keep looking online to see if I can get my hands on more, but um, everyone's all sold out. The only way to do it is to buy the used ones, that the the suspicious used ones on eBay, <laughs> with the weird stains all over them and stuff. You know, it's like I never don't know. turned to above 130 decibels, not once. For the home pods and stereo mode, that's where <laughs> I keep it. I don't turn it down. <laughs> <laughs> I just always remember buying speakers. You know, like you know, those things can get blown, right? You don't want you know buying speakers a little dicey online used yeah. ones. Yeah, I don't know if you could blow out the home pods. I don't know if that's yeah, they possible. don't get all that loud, but. I don't know. Yeah. Well, they do get pretty loud in stereo mode, but that is a common complaint is they don't get loud enough. But they get loud enough for me. I've never turned them up all the way, ever. You never have? No, not once. And I have a pretty yeah. large living room, and I've never felt the need to turn them up all the way. I've gotten close. I've probably gotten up to 70, 80%, but I've never gotten wow. up to 100. When I using them uh, for, for like with a TV as a home cinema? Yeah. Never all the way? Never. Never all the way. Well, some of the some of the services are a lot quieter than other ones. That is and, true. And even yeah. like some movies on the same service, it's just it's like they're just mastered lower. And uh, sometimes I have to crank it up all the way. Yeah, I know what and you it's mean. It's still like not that loud. Yeah. And I, then you go watch something else. Like, <clears throat> yeah, and then all of a sudden it's like your ears are bleeding, eyeballs are blown open. All right, let's see here. Before we dive in, let me say a quick thank you to to me for making cult cloth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you're welcome okay, you're welcome guys strain yourself patting your back <laughs> they really are they really are fantastic i just if you're getting a new iphone if you have a mac if you have a photography lens if you wear glasses like lewis does these things are just going to blow your eyelids open they work so well you just wipe them across your device all the oils and grime and everything are just completely they're just removed. They're gone. All that's left behind is sparkling glass and metal. That's because Colt Cloth is made with a um, special fiber that goes through a special process that breaks the fiber down and increases the surface area drastically. And then they're woven into cloths. And surface area is what makes cleaning cloths work. I, I mean, if they're synthetic and they're not like cotton or something, they have to have surface area in order to pick up all the different 
muck and grime that's on your phone. And that's why cloth works so well is because the surface area is just dramatically expanded through this process. And then they're woven into, woven into these cloths. When you run your fingers across them, they actually grab on your fingertips. It's kind of crazy. You can actually feel it working. That should be my slogan. <laughs> feel it working. Uh, and let me just say, I know that some of you have reached out and said, where's my order? Where's my order? We, we huh? actually ran out of stuff. And uh, we just got restocked. And the restock was the wrong thing. So I was like, oh, my gosh. Like Some of these people are waiting like a week plus for their order. So we finally got everything squared away. If if you were waiting for your order, if you haven't gotten it yet, then uh, you should have have, uh, gotten a shipment notification recently about your order status. If not, you can always reach out to us. Uh, And then the other thing is is we are unable to ship to Australia currently. What? Because Australia is no longer allowing the Postal Service to deliver packages there. So if you're in COVID lockdown? I guess so, yeah. I guess so. Oh my so they said that if you have a package in flux, they're going to just send it back to you. <laughs> they're not even going to deliver it. So I was like, geez. Wow. I don't, it's supposed to be temporary. We're looking for other methods to ship to Australia, and, and hopefully we can find something. I'm supposed to hear back today about something. but uh, Giant it, catapult in New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> can we ship it to New Zealand <laughs> and then build a catapult? I'll look into that, Lewis. That sounds like it might be cost Always prohibitive. Let's go with the simplest answer. Yeah. That's 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 uh, Occam's razor in action right there. The simplest right. answer is it should be the correct one. Why did I not think about that? Is the real question. So barring any kind of catapult delivery service that's available out there, we might have to figure out something else. But coltcloth.co if you're available, coltcloth.co. We just got restocked, so now is a good time to uh, make your purchase. If we were out of your stuff before, you're just going to be so impressed. I use these on all my gadgets, glasses, sunglasses, you name it. They just work great. Uh, here's your here's your new catchphrase. Oh, yeah. Feel the clean. Feel the clean. <laughs> I like that. That's actually pretty good. Feel the clean. God, I should trademark Use that, that free of charge. Okay, well, I wasn't planning on paying you for that, so that's good to hear. <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna claim what that I came up with it. My high powered legal team was gonna bully you into silence. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, so coltcloth.co, coltcloth.co. Uh, let's dive into the fun here, Lewis. First story, the iPhone 13 review roundup, stellar displays, cracking cameras, outstanding battery life. Now, let me let me take this moment to say cracking cameras may not have been the phrase I would I would have recommended using because you know, he, he means they're cracking. They're good, that's right? That's a good point. That's It's such a UK thing. They're cracking. It's a Britishism, right? Uh, right. And I, I'm just so used to people saying that at this point. And, but now that I when I saw it there on the screen, I'm like, oh, geez, it sounds like a defect. <laughs> yeah, and even some of the people in the comments were like, what do you mean? What, what, what's going on with the cameras? And you guys didn't mention it. So oh, we're not boy. saying the cameras are cracking. They're cracking. Apostrophe. <laughs> Get rid of that G. Apostrophe on the end. That's what That's what Killian means here. So we got all the reviews, and I thought we could just kind of touch on some of the reviews that came in and talk about the marquee features of iPhone 13, the marquee features of iPad mini, what's good, what's bad, what's ugly, and we can call it good there. So let's start with um, the A15, Lewis. The the beating heart of all these phones. Oh, yeah. Uh, The new processor, the A15 Bionic, powers the iPhone 13 Pro experience, but it's getting harder and harder to see speed increases between generations, wrote Stuart Miles for pocket lint. Yep. And uh, Wired also said the improvements over last year's iPhone 12 Pro range are all iterative, though very welcome. Iterative. Iterative seems to be a big word that gets bandied about a lot in all these I would say that's one of the most... That's that's one of the words I saw used the most often was iterative about iterative. iPhone 13, iPhone 13 Pro. In fact, I heard some people speculate that the iPhone or the A15 was actually just a spec bumped uh, A14. <laughs> I don't know if that's true, but where the real performance seems to be is on the Pro model with the extra GPU where you get up to like 60% in, por- uh, in uh, performance increase. But if you just have like the... Um, the regular iPhone 13, you don't get the extra GPU core, and so the the increase in speed is kind of kind of minimal. It's like you know between 15 and 18 percent. So it's respectable, thought, but it's not a lot, you know. I thought I read even like 10 percent boost. I but think in some yeah. scenarios it might be 10 percent. So <coughs> not not a huge not a huge revolution on the A15 front, but that's okay. We we kind of knew that it might be more of a spec bump in that regard. 
Uh, let's talk about the cameras because that is one area where people were kind of impressed. And and with a S update, you know that seems to be where <laughs> people or where we normally get our biggest update. So the New York Times, Brian Chen, focused on photography in his review. He used a special tripod to snap shots of a single scene using iPhone 13, 13 Pro, iPhone 12, iPhone 10s. Takeaway: Yes, this year's iPhone's cameras are better, but the difference <laughs> Whoa, the differences shocker. seen are small, except in low light situations. Now, this is something that I've kind of heard a lot. Is by and large, the differences in camera quality really only come into play in low light situations and in in regular well lit situations there doesn't seem to be much of an improvement at least as far as what we've seen so far you know here's the thing about these early reviews is it's all access journalism right i mean i don't want to i don't want to <laughs> i don't want to point any fingers but you know like you can't really be critical of apple in these early days because all the people that have reviews or that have phones that are doing reviews, they all receive their phones early. And there's no way those people are going to jeopardize that relationship with Apple because it's a golden ticket to get into Willy Wonka's warehouse. <laughs> They're not going to do anything to jeopardize that relationship. So I always kind of keep that in my mind when I'm reading these reviews, especially with the negative stuff, because people will tend to not just gloss over stuff, Lewis, they glass over it. And they the won't be holes. they won't necessarily be as critical as somebody who doesn't get the phone early from Apple or especially someone who buys it. Because these people, I mean, if you get a phone early from Apple, if they gave me a phone early, I would I would literally say whatever they <laughs> wanted. TC could send me a handwritten script on a napkin and I would just sit there and I'd be like talking to you in the camera and I'd be looking down every like Shh. few seconds to read it. Because you would you you automatically get like a million clicks on your YouTube channel just for getting the early access because you're the only one that has the phone. So Apple's actually really smart. They create a huge uh, baseline of really positive videos with the early access program, in my humble opinion. And then when people go to make their buying decision when the phone is released, right, tomorrow, they go to YouTube, what do they find? Everything's positive because all those people got their phones early, so they're going to temper their, their reviews. Now, that's not to say that... All these people definitely did that and, and, and glassed over all the negatives. But it is something to keep in mind because I, I do feel like some people, maybe they were they were going to be critical, but then they kind of they, they tempered their reaction to make it a little less negative. You know what I'm saying? I kind of feel like that happens a lot. Well, yeah. So have you seen Austin Mann's review and the pictures he's taken with it? I Some haven't. of the macro shots? No, I Oh, haven't. my God. I just dropped a link in Slack. Uh, it. They're just amazing. Really? You know, I mean, his pictures are always amazing, but uh, and he always gets early access, you know. Yeah. Uh, but the, I mean, you look at these things, and they're just, they're just unbelievable. Can we show these? Picture here? of like a fire ant macro, a leaf. Oh, this is a video. We can't look at this, Lewis. Video. Oh, here we go. Some kind of walking stick or something like that. These pictures are amazing. Shot on iPhone 13 with telephoto lens. Okay, raw file, pro raw file, edited in in iPhone in. In Lightroom, so these are edited photos. You should know that. That's cool. This is a, uh, a macro Look photo of a leaf. Yeah, that's impressive. You can They're get less beautiful. than an inch away with the wide angle lens, which is really cool. You see that fire ant? Oh my gosh! Look at that. That thing's getting ready to take a big old bite out of that guy's <laughs> leg. He's like, he's like, hold still, don't move. He's like, the guy's like, I don't know about this man. This thing looks like it's about to bite me. He's like, don't move. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Look. Yeah, look at those. Those are beautiful. We got some shells. Wow. Oh, wow. Look at this one with the leaf. He takes a picture of the leaf, and then he zooms in on whatever these two things are on the leaf. What are those, like yeah. bugs or something? Yeah. I, I, I People should definitely go check it out. AustinMan.com, A-U-S-T-I-N-M-A-N-N.com. I mean, if you like photographs, you, you want to see what this thing's capable of. I mean, yeah. it's pretty astonishing. So back to the specs, though. So the cameras are are definitely an upgrade. People notice the biggest change in low light situations, especially with sensor shift on the main camera. Now you get less, um, uh, you get, you get less wobbly video, right? So they're more stabilized, which is going to be really cool for people who take a lot of video. And then the low light pictures seem to be, to be better. I think in large part due to the larger apertures, you also get the uh, you also get the focus pixels on the wide angle camera for the pro version of the phone. 
which enables macro mode and also allows you to zoom in and out on, on stuff and the wider aperture on both the phones for the wide camera. So there are definitely some improvements, but the one thing I wanted to mention, actually, maybe I should save this for my, uh, for my critiques. Oh no, it's here. <laughs> the cinematic mode, right? The marquee feature of the iPhone. When I found this out, I was kind of stunned. I didn't actually believe what I was reading. And that is the cinematic mode, right? which allows you to automatically adjust the focus from face to face in your video is locked to 1080p and furthermore is locked to 30 frames per second. And when I found that out, I was flabbergasted, stunned. <laughs> and and I know there's a lot of people who are like, oh, it's not a big deal. It's just 1080p. I guess the reason that it's a big deal to me is it basically renders the feature completely useless for all intents and purposes, I <laughs> use my phone for taking videos of my family. I want to have my footage be future-proofed. Well, what's more future-proof, 1080p or 4K? No-brainer, right? We've been doing 4K forever now. So I'm not going to make the sacrifice of fidelity to shoot at 1080p just to get some autofocus effects that we can talk about here in a second. Sometimes <laughs> Some people are saying they don't actually even work that well, depending on the scenario, especially if it's low light and sacrifice 4K fidelity. Like that's that's a non-starter for me. I'm not going to do it. So it's, for me, the, the feature goes from being a really useful, cool feature to being somewhat of a gimmick, honestly. And I know I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be winning any fans for that opinion, but I, I think it's true. And if you don't care about 4K, that might not be true for you. And the other part of it is it's locked at 30 frames per second, which is hilarious because they call it cinematic mode. And for those of you that don't know much about the way movies are made, the cinematic effect is is caused by shooting at 24 frames per second because it allows you to have a specific shutter speed that creates kind of like a dreamy fictional effect and the higher the uh, frames per second you go the more operatic that footage becomes that's why soap operas are shot at like 60 frames a second and it looks hyper real right so 30 frames per second is not a cinematic frame rate 24 frames per second is. So I don't know why they locked it at 30 frames per second because cinema, cinematic mode implies it should be 24 frames per second, which, which was the other mind-boggling thing to me that they did. Like, okay, I get it. You're doing a huge amount of processing and you have to create this artificial background that has to be included on every single frame. There's all this you know, computational stuff that has to happen for every frame. So 30 frames per second, you, or uh, 1080p, you can't do 4K. I get that. That's too much processing power. But but why not 24 frames per second? Like, that would to me, that would make it easier to actually process. So I'm really just confused as to why they made the decisions that they made. That's I never even crossed my mind. Yeah, and, and you know, for a lot of people, and this was when I tweeted this, a lot of people were like, I don't care about that. <laughs> Most people aren't going to care about that. Maybe that's true. Maybe that's true. That's totally fine. <laughs> But I just find it to be very confusing because for those of us that actually know something about the way video is, is, is recorded and made, the way motion picture works, it seems strange that you would call something cinema mode, but its specs are not cinema-like. For It's going to look great on TikTok. That's all that matters. Well, that, that probably is true. Uh, so Jay Stratton the third, Jay Stratton the third, not the second Lewis. He's not the first. He's no, the third. No, no. The the third edition of Jay Stratton. He says it's a Gen One feature, man. I'll support 4K on iPhone 14. Dude, I cannot tell you how many times I've heard that comment. And and you're right. It is probably going to be 4K on the iPhone 14. But doesn't that just annoy you more? <laughs> it's like <laughs> so they 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 are withholding for whatever reason, whether it's technically or or intentionally, to make you excited for a feature that's coming down the pipe. They're they're hold they're withholding a feature that would make the feature useful and people say well i'm not it's not a big deal because it's going to be on iphone 14 well yeah but that's a year away and you have to buy a whole new phone to get it so i, I don't know am i going overboard here lewis am i making too much of a big deal out of this i think uh the spec part of it i think is less important than the how does it work in reality uh and that's what uh that's what the this one review was saying right the wall street journal it's like basically uh, it, it struggles to know where objects begin and end is what Joanna Stern wrote. Yeah. Uh, it's like in the early days of port portrait mode, but it's worse because now the blur moves and warps 
She says she shot footage where the software lost parts of noses and fingers and struggled with items such as a phone or camera. Oh. I mean, that's if it's like really that half baked, it really is a total gimmick. And uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I, we were talking about last week, right? Like you can imagine this becoming like so overused, yep. like some, you know, lo-fi Instagram filter or something, right? It's like everything has this and suddenly it seems like, yeah. I feel <laughs> like if they would have made this 4K, 24 frames per second, and it was actually reliable, and maybe it is maybe it is reliable. Maybe Joanna Stern's review is not representative of real world results, you know, generally speaking. Mm. I feel like yeah. I would have used this all the time. I really do. I I would have just kept this on all the time because it would have been such a useful feature. But now the iPhone 13's marquee feature has essentially become useless to me. Because I'm no. not gonna do it in ten eighty P. I'm just not. <laughs> I'm not trying to be a four K snob, but like in ten years, in twenty years. I want the the videos of my family and my kids to be the highest resolution possible. I'm not going to care if the background's blurry. I want to oh, be able man. to see my kids' faces, right? When we're all in our 12K uh, I, I, uh, Apple goggles. Yeah, it's going to it's gonna be like looking at a, uh, you know, a, a Polaroid. It's going to have that cool nostalgic look. You're going to love it. You're going to love it even more. <laughs> there you go. It's a nostalgic look. Uh, let's see here. So... If you want 4K at 120 hertz, this is uh, Greg M saying that is 16 times more data than 1K at 30 hertz. Look, I'm sure there's a lot of technical reasons why <laughs> they did what they did. I'm just saying it sucks. So, <laughs> I, I, I mean, I get that. And and I know there are limitations, technical limitations. I just think it's a disappointment, you know? It's like, oh, I was really hyped on this feature, but it, buried in the details is a Achilles heel that's so bad that I actually will probably not end up using it. It's like when they released the um, the Canon R5 DSLR. I don't know how many how many of you are familiar with this story. They hyped it that it was going to do 8K video, and people were super mega hyped about this because it was like this affordable camera. You could do 8K. And then as soon as it came out, it was like, oh, well, as soon as you turn on 8K, the camera starts overheating, and you can barely use it for like more than like a minute and a half. <laughs> so like this feature that everyone thought... <laughs> was going to be really cool, ended up to not really be that useful. And built into the minutia of the fine print was the band hammer. It's like, oh, really cool feature. And then you read into it. It's like only useful for 30 seconds or whatever. So anyway, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to go on for uh, so so long about this. But I thought it was worth mentioning because I, I thought this is this was – I know this sounds hyperbolic and I only half mean it to be. It's, it's devastating for the iPhone 13, I thought. I was like, whoa, marquee feature? <laughs> out the door man it just is not going to wow. be useful to me at all so okay there's um there's cinema mode that was one of the bad things let's talk about some of the good things lewis promotion yeah promotion's getting good uh reviews pretty much across the board uh the verge wrote uh, uh let's see this is dear bone i believe uh when i scroll on the iphone 13 pro the text stays readable instead of turning into a blur Things moving on the screen are smoother. It feels more like a direct interaction with my finger because the iPhone can literally change its refresh rate to match my movement. So that's pretty that cool. Sounds, that sounds promising. You know, I forgot to ask you, Lewis, which uh, phone did you – did you pre-order one of them? Minivan Blue. You got Pro. mom's Minivan Blue yeah. Pro. I'm not even surprised. That's the other thing. Look, I just <laughs> I just wish – like with, with such an iterative update, I really wish that Apple did – better colors or just more colors for the pro like for the iphone 13 you get some interesting new colors and i feel like that kind of makes up for the lack of major feature uh major marquee features but with with the pro you don't get colors or major marquee features you could just get blue mom's mini man blue which i was like if you would have just given us the bronze i would have just shut up and been like okay at least I got the big, beautiful Buster Heine bronze, right? <laughs> it's Buster after a full summer in Arizona, shirtless with all the oil rubbed all over his body. That's all I wanted, Lewis. I would have been happy with that. But instead we got Honda Odyssey 2011 <laughs> blue. I'm sure all it's right. going to be stunning in person. Stunning. Stunning. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So there we go. So let me talk about one of the other big features here, and that is battery life. This is not one of the ones I would have guessed would have been important, but one of the things that we've heard over and over and over again is how how hugely increased the battery life is for the iPhone 13 and especially the iPhone 13 Pro. So the uh, what am I reading here from? This is from 
<laughs> from did Holland. <laughs> did I, did, who is this? I don't even know. I don't know. I don't know who that's from. I don't know who this quote is from. Should I still read it? Because I can't attribute them. Okay, well, here's one from uh, Dieter Bond. So let's see here. The change that's most likely to make the, be- the biggest impact is from The Verge. For the most people is battery life. On a day when we really pushed the phone with lots of 4K video and max brightness on screen, it still lasted from early morning to 11 p.m. with 20% remaining. With somewhere north of four hours of heavy use in the screen time tracking app, a day with less intense usage clocked me in at seven hours of screen time, of on-screen time, before the low battery warning kicked in. Of screen on time. It's screen the on time. It's, a, it's the same thing, Willis. A little awkward. So that that is one of one of the powerful features of iPhone 13 Pro, Pro Max, is the absolutely absurd increase in battery life, especially for streaming video and 4K content and stuff. And that's something that I do all the time. Like I, I pretty much have content streaming from YouTube for like the majority of the day because I have YouTube Premium, so I can play the video or the audio without the video without the screen being on. So the the ability to actually uh, uh, play more video and get better b- better battery life. That is a hugely practical feature. Like if you're at Disneyland taking a ton of videos of your kids in that in that really beautiful 1080p cinematic mode to to <laughs> save that footage for future generations to see on their 12k televisions, you're gonna get through a, more of the day without having to charge your phone. So that actually is hugely useful. Wouldn't you agree? Of course. So better there. battery life is always better, right? I mean, but, that's that's like maybe the number one feature that people really, really want every year, right? I'm always amazed at how the specs always sound better than they are. <laughs> but everybody, see, all the reviews we've read this this year, it seems like people are saying, yeah, it actually is better. Actually, what is actually better? You mean the phone? The battery life. Oh, the battery life. Got it. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's like one of the biggest increases in battery life that we've seen. It was almost like going from Intel to the M1 on the Max. It's like a huge increase in battery life. Now, the overall import performance of the phone isn't necessarily as long as the increases in video. Uh, well, the extension of battery life when watching video and streaming video and stuff. Like the 13 is 1.5 hours, right? And the 13 Pro is 2.5 hours. But if you do a lot of video watching like I do, like you all of a sudden basically get double the battery life of the iPhone 12 Pro. It's um I think it was 2.5 for the Pro Max and 2.5 for the 13. Yes, you're right. Is that was I did I say 13 and 13 Pro? Dealers, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you're right. Thanks for keeping me honest, Lewis. Please yeah, don't Yeah, yeah, don't break out live. It's great. <laughs> don't break out your line. <laughs> So there you go. It's it's an iterative update. If I were on the 12 or the 12 Pro Max, I would not be considering an update. Wow. I probably wouldn't be because I just don't think there's enough there to entice me to spend another $1,000 on a phone. Now, for those of you that are upgrading every year, you're probably excited to get the new features. I think that's cool. If I were on an 11 Pro, I would probably, and, and I did update from an 11 Pro, I would probably be considering up an update. If I were earlier than that, I would probably be updating but here's the thing here's the thing we saw a preview of iphone 14 it's looking like it's it's going to have a hole punch for the camera no notch uh i mean we saw that leak from processor now who knows if that will actually come to fruition but we know that 14 is going to be a big one i I think that apple I, i think that the pandemic has really caused a lot of disaster within Apple's supply chain. I think there are things that they probably wanted to do that they just couldn't do because of supply chain issues. So instead of giving us the phone that they wanted to give us, maybe they gave us the phone that they could give us. And I think that's true with the iPhone or with the Apple Watch Series 7 too, right? Like we saw what was what was potentially going to be going to get re- released and then it just it just didn't you know happen. didn't happen. And it's and like neither well, is this one either yet. <laughs> right. Well, I get mine tomorrow. So I got the um I got the 13 Pro in graphite, hundred twenty graphite, gigs. dude. I just, I didn't want to go graphite. So, so here's my phone now. This is exactly what my new phone's gonna look like, and that's kind of a bummer. It's like, if I'm spending a thousand dollars, I kind of want it to feel like a new phone, and there's no way for me to go. I'm not getting mom's minivan blue. blue. <laughs> I don't want it. I, the silver, <laughs> I been there, it. done that. <laughs> I wish they would have changed the silver to starlight because I, I really liked that color. I probably would have done that. Why does iPhone 13 get to have all the fun? What's what's the real difference between silver and starlight? I mean, isn't starlight just kind of... It's like champagne gold. It has like a gold quality to it. Mm. I would have loved the... Um, I, I ordered the... Um, uh, is it the Midnight for my wife? 
So she's getting like the fun blue color. I just, you know, uh, the iPhone 13 just had way more fun colors. I'm sorry. I feel like I'm complaining a lot. I, I should, I should, I should dial awfully, it back. Awfully shallow with all yeah, this color, just, color you know, bashing. I know. And, and I never would have thought that I was the guy who, who would have been like, <laughs> color is a big deal to me. But dude, silver, space gray, gold. We get it every single year. Like, can you not just give us something, TC? Give us something to get excited about color wise. I mean, maybe make five colors. Now, was it Adam Broussard? Someone was saying they're probably going to release a new color, like mid-cycle. You're probably oh, right. Oh, like they did with that purple one. You're probably uh. right. That's probably what they're going to do. They held it back. They're trying to give the iPhone 13 Pro some extra life, right, to entice some of the people who didn't buy it at release. And that's, dude, if they release a bronze, if, if look into my eyes. <laughs> Your Liz, head's going to explode. If TC releases a bronze <laughs> mid-cycle, I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> I am going to be pissed. I mean, like, really actually pissed off if, if they do that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Can you imagine? Oh, my. And I wouldn't even I wouldn't even put it past them to do that. Maybe that's what happened to the bronze. Maybe that's it. It's going to be a mid-cycle phone. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. All right. Where are we? Let me calm down. I can feel my <laughs> blood pressure rising. So, let's see here. Before we move on. So that's iPhone 13. Um, did we cover everything? I think we did. We didn't cover the uh, possible MagSafe Duo problem. Have you heard about this? I did hear about that one, and it, feel, it feels like it was already solved. Yeah? How's it solved? Well, should we, should we pull it up? Sure. Uh, let's see here. From La Manzana Mordida. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this headline from Front Page Peck. Front, yeah, front that's, page that's, Pecs. A little, that's hilarious. <laughs> Bro, WTF, iPhone 13. Might not call, might not work with MagSafe Duo because of its fat. I'm not going to read that second word. That's just it's fat <laughs> derriere. This is a family friendly <laughs> show. L M F A O. Fill us in, Lewis. What happened? Well, uh, you know, this is Prosser just digging up something from uh, La Manzana Mordida, Spanish uh -huh. website. Yeah. What does that mean? The dead apple or something? I don't know. Uh, Should have run sure. it through Translate. I'm not sure what Mordida means. Uh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> You know, somebody posted a thing saying, "Hey, the MagSafe Duo is not gonna the iPhone. It's the iPhone 13 Pro because yeah. it has the bigger battery thing. Is not gonna fit on the MagSafe Duo. It's like, and and other people are saying like, well, geez, is that how is that gonna affect other MagSafe chargers? Or you know, is the lip on that thing or on the? It actually, I think what it said was the lip on the case that covers that thing makes it too big. It doesn't sit flat on the uh, on the MagSafe Duo." You can see so, it here. Like I'm showing a picture of it for those of you that are watching. You can see, look how massive that camera hump is. Now. It's it's it, the it is it's enormous. The lip on the case. I mean, that's the thing. Like I wonder. Yeah. But the, you know, so that's you can see there's a little small space, thing, right? So yeah. So <laughs> so first of all, we should be clear. It does work. It does charge your iPhone. Apple came out and said that it works just fine. Oh, it they just, did already. Yes, they did. They made a statement earlier, I believe. So it does charge your iPhone. There was concern that it wouldn't because the camera hump was so big that it was propping the phone up on the MagSafe Duo charger so it wasn't lying flat. And you can see in this image I'm showing you, it does. The camera hump is pressing up against the camera bump. Or I mean, the, <laughs> the MagSafe Duo charger is pressing against the camera bump and so the phone doesn't lie flat, but it's, it still works. Now that does kind of look ugly. So that's kind of a bummer because you... This is not a very Apple-esque detail, right? You would think they would have figured this out. <laughs> that does not look right. It just doesn't look right. Yeah, it's not going to be very pleasing if you're, you know, hundred and what do those things cost? Hundred and fifteen dollars or something on sale. Uh, yeah, if I that got... thing doesn't work now. Well, Jeez. dude, if or, yeah. or just is so aesthetically displeasing that it gives you hives every time you look at it. All right, so Falls off hold on, just just a quick aside here. We got Jose Angel Centurion Basso. Oh my gosh. That's gonna be that's gonna be a Spanish name. Are you from Spain, Jose? He says La Manzana Mordita means the bitten apple. Oh, oh the, bitten the apple. bitten apple. There you go. Mordita. Okay. There you go. Thank you for that correction. And forgive <laughs> us for uh Lewis actually absolutely destroying that translation. Yeah, my Spanish Lewis. is not great. <laughs> <laughs> you know so bueno. people, and there's just something that people would say about you. His Spanish is not great. <laughs> If you've ever gone to a Mexican restaurant with Lewis, you'll know something about it. Spanish, not great. <laughs> so there you go. So this does work. It just doesn't look very nice. Uh, so 
thank goodness it still works because, uh, dude, I have one of these things and I'm, I'm excited to finally use it because I don't even have a, a phone that's really compatible with MagSafe. Oh, and, I, and I bought this on a Cult of Mac deal, no less. Saved myself like 30 bucks. Yeah. And, uh, and then I was like, oh, shoot, I can, I can use it with my 11 Pro, but it doesn't, doesn't stick on. So, okay, there you go. So if we had to just summarize, <laughs> camera improvements, slightly faster. You get the um, the promotion is impressive to people who are getting the pro phone, and better night photography, and then the battery life. That's that's what you're getting. So, the the vibe is the the consensus is iterative update, some good features added here. But to me, this seems to be like one of the more ir- ir- iterative updates that we've received for an iPhone. That's the way it feels. I don't know if that's true, but I know Lewis, you think that the camera has been much improved. You were talking about the tele the telephoto the tele- photo don't forget about the telephone i'm very excited about the macros too i mean the macros those things look gorgeous yeah and that's yeah. you know that's a useful thing so we'll see yeah. we'll see right. okay. back tomorrow we'll see so yeah we get our phones tomorrow i'm going to pick mine up from the apple store i'm getting a 13 and a 13 pro so that would be cool I'll have um have the ability to check both of those out and you know i know we'll love it i know we're gonna love it i like to point out the things that maybe we don't love but just so people are informed, but I know I'm going to love the phone and I'm going to upgrade next year either. Dude, let me just say real quick. Oh, dude, here's a tip that I found out this week. Do we have time to talk about this? Not really, but I'm going to do it anyway. So check this out, Lewis. <laughs> I haven't been on an AT&T rant in a long time. Okay. I found something out this week that truly blew my mind. AT&T has this trade-in program that's actually a really good deal. If you trade in a phone, like a, even an old phone, They'll give you between 350 to, um, well, they'll give you a trade-in discount. It's either $350, $800, or $1,000, depending on which phone you you trade in. But you can trade in an iPhone XR, and they'll give you $800 worth of trade-in credit for that. So you can swap it out for an iPhone 13. Now, here's the thing. Here's the catch. You have to be on an unlimited plan, right? Not a big deal. They stretch the credit out over 36 months. So... You can't sell the phone. You can't get the phone off your plan during that period of time because you'll lose the credit. And so they just keep the trade-in value of your phone. That sucks, right? They don't They don't really make that clear. I've spent like hours on the phone with customer service ironing this wow. stuff out. But that's not even what shocked me. Here's the real shocker. They have an iPhone. They call it the Next Up plan. So it's like Apple's trade-in program where you get a yearly phone you know, every year. What does Apple call their program? It's uh, deceptively named the iPhone upgrade program. The iPhone upgrade program. Okay, so at and <laughs> version of that is the at and Next Up program. I so see. check this out. You guys are going to love this. You can trade in your phone, and they'll give you the credit. And then you can also, in the process of purchase, purchasing your phone, pay 5 bucks a month. Choose to pay 5 bucks a month for the at and Next Up program. So, so every year you get a new phone, right? Well, I was like, well, that's interesting because the credit is spread out over 36 months. So how does that work? So I call customer service because I I can't figure it out on my own online. And I was like, okay, so if I trade in my phone, you give me the discount. Like, does that discount spread over 36 months? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, like, well, what if I do the um, the, the, the trade-up program, the next-up program? He's like, yeah. And I'm like, well, what happens if if I trade up my phone and get the new phone? Do I, does the, 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 does the discount apply to the next phone? He's like, Oh, no, no, that's not how that works. And I'm like, well, how does it work? He's like, well, if you choose to trade in your phone and get a new phone, you know, once you have your iPhone 13, let's say for the iPhone 14, so you've already traded in a phone for the trade-in value, and you're also part of the uh, the next up plan, right? So you've, you've traded in your phone, you've moved to the iPhone 13, and the next year you trade to the iPhone 14. So how does that work with the discount? He's like, oh, you lose the discount. And I'm like, well, you, my, it, doesn't, it doesn't continue for 36 months. He's like, oh, no, if you trade in your phone, then they stop giving you the credit. I'm like, so they just keep the value of your traded in phone originally? And he just bursts into laughter. He's like, yeah, I don't recommend people do that. I'm like, yeah, dude. Wow. <laughs> so if you, because when you're going through the purchase process, you can choose to be part of the Next Step program. But what they don't tell you is if you don't wait the full 36 months to trade in your phone for the iPhone 14, let's say, then you lose the value that they gave you for your initial traded in phone. They just keep it. And they don't so, really tell you that anywhere, I don't so think. So you would only get like a third of that amount of money? I don't know what it, it calculates to. But I mean, well, wouldn't that be, make sense? I mean, if it's 36 months, you've already gotten one year of it, ostensibly, right? <laughs> so that's a third. 
Todd L says, I'm lost already. Okay, so let me try to explain this. It's pretty this. fascinating yeah. being lost in this particular thing. Sorry, though, I know it? it's confusing. So because <laughs> we're talking about two trade-ins. So you trade in your initial phone, and they give you a credit for like 800 bucks, right? They spread that credit over eight years. But you also choose to be part of the Next Step program. So you're spending an, an additional $5 a month to have the option to, to trade up again when you've paid off half the value of the phone that you had, right? But if you exercise that option, you lose the initial trade-in value of the phone that you just traded in. That, that credit that was supposed to be applied to your plan for 36 months just evaporates. So your next up plan eventually, essentially cancels your trade-in plan. And they let you do both of them together when you're checking out. But you should never do them together because you'll lose the value of your traded-in phone. Anyway, I know it's confusing, but... Um, if you're an AT&T customer, definitely don't do the, the next step plan and the trade-in plan together because it kind of seems like a scam to me. Uh, in my humble opinion, don't sue me AT&T. It's in the fine print somewhere, I'm sure, but I couldn't find it. And I was like, dude, this is not a good deal. So do one or the other. All right, let's see here. Before we move on, do you want to talk about the iPhone 13 I, yeah, giveaway I, this here, Luke? This is a way better way to get a phone than the AT&T I like it. I think next right. up thing. Way better. Uh, you go to the cult of mac homepage. you scroll down to where it says giveaway and you click on the thing that says win iphone 13 and a bundle of magsafe compatible cases from spec you sign up next thing you know boom well maybe we can't guarantee that this will happen for you but <laughs> for somebody one lucky person is gonna get one of these things uh, it's an iphone 13 regular normal in starlight yeah. your favorite color or one of your favorite colors i it is one uh, of my favorites i wish i could have it in the phone this week, uh, so we, we teamed up with Spec. You know, they make great cases for iPhones and stuff. Uh, so you get, <clears throat> excuse me, you get the iPhone 13, you get three Spec MagSafe compatible cases. Nice. One lucky winner. You could, it could be you. Just go there. All you got to do is sign up for our uh, Cult of Mac Today newsletter or visit our Twitter page. You know, there's a variety of ways you can uh, enter, none of which involve any sort of money or anything like that. It's a free giveaway. And, uh, can't wait to give it to someone. There you go. So I put the the link in the description, or in the description, in the chat. If you guys want to check it out, you should enter. Just try. Just try. I think your odds might not might might be okay. Just give it a shot. Uh-huh. I'll also put a link in the show notes for those of you listening. If you want to give it a shot, so you can enter to win a uh, iPhone 13 and a bundle of MagSafe compatible cases from Spec. That's always the thing I don't like about getting a new phone. Is now I got to buy a new case. And the thing is, is like there's 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 never the cases that are available when the front when the phone first launches are never the cases that I want. Like I want my Rhino Shield Crash Guard case. The, this is my one and only true love case. I don't need any other case but this. <laughs> but they don't make them for the iPhone 13 and 13 Pro yet because they don't have an iPhone 13 or 13 Pro. I don't think. So, okay, let's talk about iPad Mini here, Lewis. Because yeah. this has also been getting pretty good reviews. And, and after going through all the initial impressions and the review videos, I actually think this is a really interesting device. Yeah. Uh, people are saying that even though it's, you know, $100 more than it used to be, it starts at $499. Uh, critics are loving it. They say the form factor is, you know, small enough to go everywhere, but it's got enough productivity for games, media, anything you want to do. Uh Guy Andrew Cunningham running for Ars Technica said the A15 processor that that powers it uh, is he says it's anywhere from 40 to 60 percent faster as <clears throat> compared to the A12, which I guess is the one that powers the previous iPad Mini. Yeah, uh, and it's an excellent improvement if you're swapping out the last gen Mini for a new one. Uh, another person writing for CNN Underscored, which I frankly I've never heard of. Me either. Why did they get one? Know, what, how how did they get it? one? Colton Mac didn't. That's what. How I did they know. get in this roundup? <laughs> I'll go back and delete that later. Anyway, uh, this guy, Jacob Kroll, says that the real star of the iPad mini is the 8.3-inch liquid retina display. In our testing, colors were accurate with a bit more vibrancy and deeper contrast points over the previous iPad mini. Images looked realistic, and when taking in a video, content flows naturally across the display. All that sounds... I, I, I really am going to go delete that. That just sort of sounds like, uh, it works like the other one. I Break don't out know the whip, different. too. <laughs> Someone needs to be disciplined. Uh, let's see. I guess he went on and on, droning on. He, uh, it, the iPad mini belies the general notion that a smaller device correlates to fewer features or less power. It's capable in a way that many other small tablets aren't. For instance, a 
Fire HD7 or Fire HD8 likely couldn't handle the full production of a movie or batch out image edits in the same vein. Yeah, okay. I get it. I mean, that doesn't surprise me at all. This thing's got a, a powerhouse chip in it, and uh, why wouldn't it be awesome? Yeah, so that was kind of my takeaway from this is if you want a high performance but portable lap or portable tablet, this is kind of your only pick. It seems yeah. like most of the smaller portable tablets are also kind of underpowered and, and maybe even built for children. But this thing has the A15 in it. It's it's I said this last week. It's like an it's like a uh, iPhone 13 Pro Max Max. Because you can get it with the same 5G. Well, it's not the same 5G. You're you're missing some of the um I think the like the uh, like the uh, uh six G millimeter wave or the six mil six millimeter wave spectrum. So it's not as good, but it's essentially an iPhone thirteen Pro Max Max. You get the uh the same A fifteen with the extra core. So it's better for, for gaming and stuff. And Apple Pencil too. You get the Apple Pencil two support, which depending on what you do, might be really powerful. Now I will say that there was some videos that I watched from content producers saying if you really want to actually take advantage of the Apple Pencil, then you should go for a Pro iPad because the screen on this is only 60 hertz. And you mm. definitely notice difference between 120 hertz on the on the iPad Pro versus the 60 hertz of the, of the Mini. But And the other thing that I think is really hilarious is pretty much everyone who reviewed this was like, I don't know who needs an, I, an iPad Mini, but for those who do, this is a really great one, probably one of the best updates we've ever gotten. And that's kind of true. I, I really would love to have an iPad mini because I think it's a great device, but I just don't really see a place for it in my life, you know, because I want a bigger screen. And and if I want to go something smaller, well, I have my phone. So I don't really know who the iPad mini is for. I'm happy that it exists. My <laughs> wife has one. She loves it because she doesn't want a full size iPad. But people have them, love them. I've never owned who, one either. People who have them love them, and I keep trying to tell myself that there's a reason for me to have one, but <laughs> there really, there really just isn't. Uh, but it's a powerhouse, high performance tablet, and some people were more impressed than others. Uh, MKBHD, his review, you could tell he was like, eh, "It's an iPad Mini," and he wasn't super <laughs> enthusiastic about it. Whereas Dave Two D was actually visibly excited about it and thought it was a really great tablet. MKBHD wasn't excited about the screen. Dave 2D thought it was a great screen for being an LED screen. It's not OLED, so there's that. But um, the thing that I thought was really cool about this, this is just like a fun fact, is so because this doesn't have Touch ID in the in the home button, right? They moved the the um, Touch ID, or not the Touch ID, excuse me, the, um, the volume keys have been moved because of the Apple Pencil support, right? So they moved the volume keys to the top, but the volume keys are... Well, when you have the when you have the iPad Mini in a certain orientation, the volume keys might switch. How do I explain this? I'm having a hard time even explaining it. When you're holding the iPad Mini in a certain orientation, one volume key might turn the volume up, but when you switch it over to the other side, well, now that same volume key is pointed down. And Apple thought about this, and so with the with the built-in gyroscope, it can tell what direction you're holding the iPad, and so the bottom volume key will become the um, top volume key when you switch it over and vice versa. So like your the, the volume keys are always pointed in the right direction. So like the top one always raises the volume. The bottom one always lowers the volume. I, I completely destroyed that. Did that make sense, Lewis? I have my head spinning now. I feel like I'm describing the it, AT&T problem again. It, it actually sounds kind of confusing. Uh, like it might be confusing to users. Uh but. No, so w the, the, the button that is facing towards the ceiling is always the button that will raise the volume. Does that make sense? So, but if you switch the orientation of the iPads, like if you're holding it so, so that um, the, the, the volume buttons are under your right hand, and then you switch it so that the volume buttons are under your left hand, you can see what that, that would cause a problem, right? Because the volume buttons are being switched back and forth from side to side. You're not following me? <sighs> I'm lost. Okay, well, that time I thought I explained it decently, so I'm not sure what I could say to help you further, other than Apple dynamically changes the function of the volume buttons so that the one that's pointing to the ceiling is always the one that raises the volume, and the one that's pointing to the ground is always lowering the volume. So, well, so they cool have little... volu one volume on one side and one volume on the no, other? No, the volume buttons are on the top left of the iPad. So if you're holding it horizontally, I'm holding it. I'm holding it. They would be 
So you could see if you're holding it horizontally, when you switch it to the other horizontal orientation, the, the orientation of the volume buttons changes. Mm. Does that make sense? Well, I, uh, okay, when you say point, you, I, I see what you're saying now. I, well, uh, do you, or are you just saying that? So we'll move on. I'm just hoping. I'm just hoping we <laughs> continue. Just move on. Just move on. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I maybe I destroyed that. Um, I'll edit that in post and make it sound much better. <laughs> so the other thing that people didn't ten, didn't didn't uh, tend to like so much was the iPad Mini battery life, which I guess is a horrendous disaster. Well, maybe not that bad, but here's one quote from Wired where they say that the battery life struggled. The uh, reviewer said, I managed to squeeze out five hours. I managed to squeeze five hours out of it, so almost a full work day. Unless you're using it lightly, don't expect it to last from nine to five. Yeah, right. Huh. Dude, my iPad Pro battery life is terrible. I get really? maybe three or four days of standby time, and then that thing is toast. Hmm. And uh, I found that, and I don't know if this is a problem with my specific iPad, but I found that putting it in um, in airplane mode when I'm not using it actually makes it last way longer. So I'm like, what is it doing when I'm not around? I never know what it's doing back there. Checking in with Tim. <laughs> Setting T- TC on my notes <laughs> and looking for the whereabouts of one Mr. John Prowser. All right. Well, there you go. So that is iPad mini. I think it's probably the best iPad mini upgrade that we've gotten, at least in recent memory. And I wish I had a reason to buy the iPad mini just because it's so good, but I don't. I'm going to stick with my iPad Pro for, for now. <laughs> okay, let's cruise into the final part of the, the episode here. Um, I thought it was at least mentioning that we got an update for HomePod this week, at least in the beta. This is going to be coming to yeah, some all users <laughs> sometime soon, but I just think this is interesting. Apple's still <laughs> updating the HomePod. They're still updating it, you know? Discontinued product, still getting updates. Apple's newest HomePod beta alongside iOS and iPadOS 15.1 betas on Tuesday brings back lossless audio and Dolby Atmos support. Both features can be enabled from inside the Home app, but only if you have an invite. Apple has been working uh, to bring the newest audio features to HomePod speakers for a while. It first began testing them shortly after WWDC 2021 in June when the third HomePod 15 beta was made available to testers. Here's the bummer about this, Lewis. And this, a bummer? Is, this is one of the downfalls of, of HomePod, man. So the lossless audio only works with Apple Music. Oh, here we go again. I don't subscribe <laughs> to Apple Music, so I can't use this feature. You know, I just it's just it's just could they not form a partnership with the <laughs> other music streaming services to take advantage of this feature? You clearly need to change your ways. Well, you know, I just Spotify is so good, man. It's just so good. So much better than Apple Music in virtually every way. Oh, dear. And I think this is one of the reasons HomePod didn't succeed is Apple shot themselves in the foot. This this closed ecosystem, these features that they bring only to their own services, you know, it just makes it so that fewer people are going to be interested. I mean, if you would have worked with the different music streaming services to get the supported across the board, maybe more people would have found your speaker to be something worth buying. But... <laughs> I think yeah. people really care that much about lossless audio. I do. I think it's cool. I mean, especially knowing that oh. my that my HomePod has a capability that I can't take advantage of. I bought it, and then they <laughs> they announce this new capability, and oh, can't use it. Sorry. Oh, oh, oh you can. You got to pay us an extra yeah, you ten dollars a month to use there this one. Go. It's just, dude, it's annoying. Spotify <laughs> is dark and sad. Sonos is great with Spotify. I used to be a Spotify person, but I've transitioned to Apple Music just fine. I don't know, man. I mean, the discovery feature in Spotify is better. And actually, I know I've said this a thousand times. The one thing I really don't like about Apple Music is their curation. Like, th- they, they make it a feature that it's curated by humans. I don't like that at all. I'm like, I don't care about your music tastes. I don't want you to curate <laughs> something for me. I don't want you to tell me what you like. Why am I paying to hear what you like? I want to hear what I like. They recommend suggestions for you. I, they have gotten better. They have I'm gotten better. I'm not saying they're good suggestions, but they make them. But Spotify, man, is just so good. It it when when you listen and there's so many features in there that I feel like maybe Apple Music is built in, but didn't have when I first spent a lot of time trying it out. Like when you are listening to a song or a specific playlist, 
and it comes to the end of it, Spotify just starts looking for other music that it thinks you might like and starts playing that instead. Now, does Apple Music do that now? Maybe they do. Oh, my God. Yeah, I had another horrible experience with uh, with this the other day. I was using uh, CarPlay, right? Uh-huh. And, and I'm, I'm using Siri, and I said, hey, Siri, play... I can't even remember what it was, but I can't believe you just said those two words together. Do you realize you just you just triggered everybody, Liz? Uh, really? You have to say, "Hey, s- it didn't even." Oh, it didn't work. I thought I slurred or something <laughs> enough that it would. <laughs> well, you just you just slur a lot when you speak. So maybe. Hey, Siri, what are you doing? <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. I, I didn't mean to. to anyway, uh, I ask it to play, you know, some very specific song by a very specific artist. Don't remember exactly what it was, but. Uh, completely didn't understand what I was saying. Yeah. Started playing some completely unrelated song. As it's, you know, stop, I, I, I said it again, enunciated as clearly as I could, and it, it started playing some other completely different song, uh, and and it was, uh, it, it started playing a Led Zeppelin song, I was like, okay, well, that's that's cool, I, I like that song at least, and but then when once that song stopped, yeah, it just started playing something else completely random, and it was like, what? It, not... Not the song I requested, not even another Led Zeppelin song, not even really a song that sounded like that Led Zeppelin song or, you know, that I would say, oh, yeah, if you like this, you would also like that. It was just like, you know, (laughs) I don't know, bizarre. And that to me, that is the most frustrating thing about using Siri with uh, Apple Music or with Apple TV, you know, because, I mean, it, it can't execute the most basic, simple thing. Play the album called xyz by the artist xyz the number of times that i say that you know distinctly clearly and and specifically saying it you know the way you're supposed to and get some result that is absolutely not even close to what i wanted to see that is to me that is the biggest downfall of these things and i i don't i frankly i don't understand how it is that bad because it's not like you're saying you know it, it's like you're requesting something that it doesn't already have the data for. It has the artist name. It, I mean, I'm not asking for something obscure. I'm asking for like, you know, some song that ever, is definitely on there, and I'm saying it exactly as it's spelled. And it just can't. It just can't do it. It, it amazes me that when that happens. Uh, yeah, yeah, and and that's one of the things that the Spotify Echo partnership does so well. And if you ask the Echo to play something, it 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 grabs the album from the exact album you want from Spotify. Like I would say a majority of the time and plays the actual music you, you want to hear. And Siri just, Siri just is not great, man. Yeah. It's yeah, that, I, honestly, I think it's getting worse. I, and I, I started wondering, <laughs> it's actually getting I'm worse. Not kidding. I'm not kidding. It is getting worse. And, uh, it seems like, um, all the voice recognition stuff and even the, the, like the swiping stuff. It seems like all that sort of artificial intelligence stuff that's happening on the phone is getting worse. I don't know. Well, you know I, what you I, need? I, I, you need more cores. A new phone. You, mean, you need more neural cores, Lewis. Yeah, That's the problem. You need more cores to help process <laughs> all that. Yeah, Siri really is not great, man. And and it, it hasn't really made any significant strides in the last five years, has it? I, 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 totally, I totally feel you. It's like the amount of times I ask Siri to do something and it just doesn't get it is really just frustrating. It makes it like, especially the, um, uh, like the auto dictation like I, when I when I try to dictate messages to uh, messages, it like completely butch- butchers it. And like it's weird. Like you'll see it get it right, and then it goes back and it changes yeah. to something completely different. It's it I, really struggles to be accurate. Yeah, I I think I've mentioned this before. I mean, I, I've said you know, hi, this is Lewis, for instance. That's my name. It's my iPhone. How do you think that should be spelled? Maybe the way that it's spelled in all you know. On my device, L O U G H I S. Change. For, it, I've seen it change from the right spelling to one or even two other other wrong spe- You know, yeah. not you know incorrect spellings. L U I S, L O U I S, and then you know L-U- sometimes okay. it happens as you're as you're hitting send. You see it change, right? And you're like, what? Oh my god, it, that that to me is totally frustrating. They they've got to fix that. They've got to if they're going to keep talking about how they're the best at artificial intelligence and they're the best at pro- providing a premium experience. That is, I would say, go as far as say as it's 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 basically broken because you don't get the feeling that you can depend on it, right? You get the feeling like, oh, it's a crapshoot. If I ask it to play a song, it may or may not play the one I want. And that that's not what you want. That's not what you want. Right. Out of this stuff. You'll have enough at neg- negative experiences with it where you're like, I just give up. I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm just going to find a different way. It's really remarkable how much better Amazon and Google natural language interactions work 
and how how much better they are than, than Siri. I mean, Siri yeah. just really it, it it just doesn't feel like you can you can use it with any kind of well, you can't really use it and have it be reliable like you say. And so eventually, you're like, I just I, I don't want to waste my time anymore because it just makes you mad. Yeah, and have you ever noticed this? I don't know if you use Apple Maps, but a lot of times it it pronounces you know kind of common names. Uh, street names or whatever, um, st- strangely puts emphasis on the wrong syllable. Uh, and sometimes this is what's really bizarre to me. Sometimes, as you're going along, it'll say, you know, turn on La Brea Avenue, and then the next time it says turn on La Brea Avenue, it says turn on Labria Avenue. It's like it doesn't even. It's not even consistent with its pronunciation of these names, these street names. I, I, it's, I don't understand what's going on. I wish if somebody works on Siri or has some insight into what's going on with this, I would love to actually hear what, what in the world is going on. Why <laughs> are these things happening? <laughs> Jonathan Simple says, I agree, Lewis, L O U G H I S. It had a correct right when I hit send and it will correct and it was correct in the first place. Oh God. And sometimes when you're doing it quick and like, you're dictating a message and then right as your thumb is coming down to hit send, it changes like some word to something embarrassing. It's like, Hey, I'll see you soon in my panties. And then you hit the send. You're like, no, <laughs> it's too late. You can't, you can't correct it because it's, it just does it as your thumb is hurtling towards the send button. And you can't stop it. It's amazing. Yeah, it's man. It's too hard and it's, it's, it's not working out. Yeah, it, it, it really is bad. I would love to see them actually make it usable. And and the thing is, is like, if they would... So Siri is good for yes or no commands. It is good for turning lights on and off. Like with my HomePods, I actually feel like that works pretty well. Sometimes it works even better than than the Echo. Oh, Louis, did I lose you? And uh, sometimes my Echo really struggles with that stuff. And the HomePod actually gets that stuff right. Like HomeKit feels like it's pretty rock solid. Whereas the, even though the the ability to understand the natural language is better on the Echo, like its ability to control my house is 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 uh, way less reliable, and it's constantly misunderstanding me or not able to do things that uh, I want it to, to do. So, uh, in that regard, at least HomeKit adds a level of usefulness to um, to Siri commands and stuff. And as long as we have Lewis frozen, I'll just tell you guys this real quick: they're going to be adding the ability to control your home kit accessories at specific times. So you could say like, Hey, you know who turn the lights on in 10 minutes or turn the TV on and off. So they're adding some really useful functionality to, to home pods in the near future. I just think it's interesting. <laughs> Look at Lewis's face. Frozen. <laughs> Am I, I'm sorry, Lewis. Am I boring you? Do you not like what I'm saying? You look like you might have a little digestional distress. Is, is everything okay? Just take a moment to catch your breath. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so so they're they're continually adding like these really great features to HomePod, and all I'm saying is it kind of makes you wonder. You know, it's like HomePod Mini just it can't be it. That can't be it for HomePod. That that can't be the vision for Apple's smart speaker ecosystem. And uh, we've heard rumors that they're working on other products, of course. And the other cool thing that's coming up as far as HomePod features go is they're, they're allowing you to make your HomePod Mini the default speakers for your Apple TV, which before you had to have regular HomePods to do that, which is hilarious, isn't it? It just goes to my point. like They withheld a certain feature from HomePod Mini so that people would buy the regular HomePods, and now that HomePod is defunct, it's like, okay, we'll add that feature to HomePod Mini. So I don't know what happened to Lewis. He got completely disconnected. Let's see if we can add him back here, and uh, if not, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna end the show and see what happens. Let's see if we can get him. I hope everything's okay. Hey, what in the world happened there? Did I bore you so badly that you just hung up on me? I just I just froze. I'm froze up, man. I got all all <laughs> nervous. <laughs> you pulled a you pulled a uh, was it a James Cameron? We were at CES and he and he totally freaked out because he, like the keynote was going all wonky and then he just abandoned ship and ran off this fled the stage. It wasn't James Cameron. <laughs> it was uh, who who directs Transformers? Michael Bay. It was Michael Bay. It was Michael Bay. We were there at CES 
and he was like trying to introduce some smart <laughs> fridge from Samsung, and I guess the 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 um, the keynote or the uh, uh, the teleprompter went all wacky, and he started getting all nervous and flubbing over his words, and then he just kind of froze, and the whole audience sat there awkwardly, and he's like, "I got to get out of here." And he just ran. Wow. <laughs> and the whole thing was over, and then the Samsung executives had to like come out and rescue <laughs> the whole keynote and try to carry on like everything was cool. Even wow. though it was one of the most awkward, it was definitely the most awkward CES experience I ever had. But <laughs> it was one of the most um, awkward live perform- performance experiences I think I've ever witnessed. I actually felt bad for him. All right, guys. I brought Lewis back just to say this. I think we should go ahead and wrap it up there, Lewis. I think that's all the cult guests we have for people this week. And we went like an hour and a half. I think that's pretty good. If you guys want to come hang out with us and let us know what you think about the newest iPhones, the iPad mini. We would love to hear from you. I'm at Airfont ERF when Lewis is at Lewis Wallace. This has been the Cult Cast, the best 30 plus minute out of conversation you're going to hear all week long. New episodes of the Cult Cast come out every Thursday night. I want to thank everyone for listening, even when things went off the tracks, which every once in a while, every once in a while, we got to have a pickup along the track. This week, uh, this was like a miracle compared to last week. <laughs> that is true. Thanks to everyone for listening and for watching live, and we will see you guys next time. I can't wait to get my hands on that big, beautiful pro list. It's not going to be perfect, you know, but... And I wish it were Buster Heine Bronze, but... (laughs) My big question is just how good or bad does the blue look? Is what Because I... The, the blue, you know, is it going to look good or bad? And, uh, you know, you're talking about the minivan has really kind of tainted my uh, my expectations. Now I'm, I'm actually kind of nervous. But I had to go for it. I had to give it a shot. Yeah. I'm hoping it looks good in person. Yeah. Oh, we need to do the, uh, <laughs> we need to do the Q&A maybe next week. Tom Walker tried to fo- follow at Lewis Wallace, L-O-U-G-I-A-G-H-I-S. <laughs> Uh, That's didn't a work, great dude. Twitter right there. It didn't work. Your, tw- your Twitter handle is broken. <laughs> Lufus Wallace. <laughs> uh, we'll have to contact Jack Dorsey and see if we can get that fixed. Thanks for the heads <laughs> up, Tom. All right, guys. I'm hovering over the end stream. Everyone have a great weekend. Let us know how your phone's working.